Assuming you're the first person to watch this video on third-person perspective, you'll be the first person to learn about third-person perspective. We are wrapping up our series on perspective this week by talking about the third-person perspective. This is happening in the fourth video in the series, but whatever. If you had to pick a default perspective, I think it would likely be third person. It is by far the most flexible perspective from a narrative standpoint and allows you to avoid some of the compromises that are built into first and second person perspective, which I've touched on in previous videos. That's not to say that third is easy to write in or that there aren't considerations that need to be made. There's also two different types of third person perspective that you need to pick from, those being third limited and third omniscient both of which have different rules that generally need to be followed, and both are suitable in different situations. So let's talk about third-person perspective, the different flavors that exist, and some of the important decisions you need to make if you decide to use it. In third-person, both third-limited and third-omniscient, the story is told from the perspective of a sort of disembodied narrator who is telling the story. The narrator describes what the characters are doing and thinking either by using the character's name or by using whatever pronoun that that character is referred to. It's very common in third person to follow different characters at different parts of the story. In the case of third limited we would be getting different character viewpoints in the case of third omniscient we would technically be seeing different groups of characters. Now, third person is divided into third limited and third omniscient. Third limited being probably the most common perspective of the two. In third limited, we are seeing the story through the perspective of one character at a time. While we still use third person pronouns and it's the narrator actually telling us the story, we still see the thoughts and emotions that that viewpoint character is seeing and experiencing and also everything in the environment that they observe. The important point is in third limited, we don't see the thoughts of the other characters or know directly what emotions they are feeling. We know that the viewpoint character feels angry, we know the thoughts that they are thinking, but when it comes to the other characters in the scene, all we know is what they are revealing through their body language or saying through dialogue. Contrast this with third omniscient, where we know the thoughts and feelings of every character in the scene. Nothing is hidden from the reader. The important thing to remember about omniscient is that we are consistently seeing everything and not just jumping between perspectives of different characters. That's a crucial distinction. Jumping between character perspectives randomly is called head hopping and is a sign of a poorly written limited, not a well written omniscient. You can switch between characters throughout the course of a story written in third limited, but it's almost always without exception done at a scene or a chapter break. The limited nature of third limited has some advantages. For one thing, it gets us much closer to the character since we are only seeing their thoughts and feelings as we move through the scene. It also creates opportunities to tailor the description and narration of a particular scene to the voice of the viewpoint character. If you have a third limited perspective that's very heavy on character voice and that contains a lot of character thoughts, then it's going to be very close to how that scene would have been written if it was written in first person. Third limited also lets you hide things from the reader quite easily since we're only seeing the thoughts and perspective of one character at a time. If you're writing an interrogation scene, for instance, in third limited, we don't necessarily know if the suspect is lying or not, whereas in third omniscient we would have access to his thoughts. Sometimes that can work, sometimes we want to keep the reader in the dark, sometimes we don't. That's just one of the decisions you need to make when deciding between omniscient and third limited. Just understand that one of the advantages of third limited is that we can strategically restrict information that we're giving to the reader. Regardless of which type of third person perspective you choose, there are some items that you need to keep in mind. In third limited, you need to make sure it's clear who the viewpoint character is in any given scene. Usually the reader will assume that the first name they encounter at the opening of a chapter or scene is going to be the viewpoint character for that scene. That's an easy strategy to accomplish this, but 
whatever you do, you want to make sure that it is very clear within the first paragraph or two who the viewpoint character is. While third person is the best perspective for handling a large cast of characters, you need to be careful not to go overboard. It becomes very easy to have too many viewpoints and be switching characters so often that it makes it hard for the reader to keep up with everything that's going on or to perhaps connect with any of the characters. Although that's as much of a plot problem as it is a problem with perspective. There's also a tendency for readers to enjoy certain viewpoints more than others. They will likely have characters that they are less interested in following, and so the chapters from that character's perspective aren't going to be as enjoyable. Although again, it could be argued that that's more of a character or plot problem than a problem with the perspective. Another point here is that third omniscient, at least in modern fiction, is not used very often. The average reader probably hasn't seen it very much. I don't know how big of a deal this actually is, but third limited is a much more commonly used perspective and much more widely accepted than third omniscient. While the other perspectives we've talked about often sacrifice certain things like being able to switch between characters or restricting information, you really don't have as much to lose if you go with third person. Third omniscient allows you to essentially tell the reader literally everything that's going on in the story. That's probably why there's omni in the name. Even Third Limited lets you switch between characters and pick the best viewpoint for any given scene, allowing you to hide and reveal information to your advantage in a way that is harder to do with first person. If you have a big cast or a story that's larger in scope requiring you to switch between many different characters, then third person is pretty much the only way to go. So hopefully it's clear at this point why third person is the first choice when it comes to perspective so much of the time. Just like this video was your first choice, I assume. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.